if you go to my website, www.erichaugenguitar.com, you could get tabs for this lesson and for a lot of the other things you see me play on YouTube. Let's talk about the equipment I'm using to make the sounds I'm making. This is a 1966 Fender Mustang. These are Tom Brantley custom pickups. I am in my neck position pickup for this song. I am going into my board using my Strymon Deco with the saturation about three quarters up. And I'm going into my Strymon Flint for a little bit of reverb, leaving that going into my, not my silver tone, actually it's the, the further amp over here. It's the Tweed Pro today. That has a Weber Alnico 15-inch speaker. It's being recorded with a, a ribbon microphone, the SE Electronics X1R, going into a cheap little ART2 preamp, going into my Task MDR40. In GarageBand, I usually will scoop out some of the low mud, about anything below 60 hertz, and then I may or may not compress it, and then I often will add additional plate reverb from Valhalla FX DSP to give it a little more, because in the room it's not actually as much reverb as you're hearing on TV. Let's walk through the chord progression to a change is going to come, a great classic Sam Cooke song. If I wasn't going to do anything fancy, if I was just going to play the bar chords, which is the structure that I'm hanging all of my fills, it's a B flat. And it's 12 eighths, so it's a lot of B flats. C minor. C minor, E flat, D7, that's kind of the coolest part of it, G minor, B flat, and that's the structure for most of the song, there is a little bridge part that's G, or sorry, B flat, C minor, B flat, C minor, B flat, C minor, I think it might actually go, yeah, then it has a C major, I, I believe to an F, but don't hold me to that, I, I, I honestly don't remember right now. So this is another example of how to hang some Hendrix, or just, you can call them Hendrix, you can call, call them R&B fills, onto such a progression to just, well, A, it sounds cool, and um, it's all about, yeah, getting, getting our hand out of this feeling, of feeling stuck. So, on these B flat, uh, B flat chords, which are root six major chords, because the root is on the sixth string, I am visualizing a major pentatonic scale, which is uh, six, eight, five, eight, five, eight, five, seven, um, six, eight, six. on which the first chord, I do a little hit like that. What do I do? So what that is, yeah, I do the chord, a little kind of bass walk, and then this Hendrix fill, which is five and six. I'm gonna hammer on to the seven on the G. And that's the sound of the, the second of the key. Moving up to the third, which is a very nice sound. Then I do some sixths of the key. So I'm seeing, do I have a pencil? No, I don't. Uh, my, the, the sixth is, it's an interval I'm referring to. Um, was that that is my ring finger on the eight and and my middle finger is already on the seven I can back that up because that's still in key and I could have gone down to here but because I know I'm going to see C minor next I end up on ten and eight Hold on, my cat just walked into the shot, so I'm going to have to let her out of the room. Welcome back. The cat is free. So yeah, 
there's my, my first B flat fill or passage. And then I'm going to go to a C, yeah, C minor. And again, hang the thumb over the top for the eight. And you could hit either those eights up here, or you could hit 10, 8, 8. And then this is the classic Curtis Mayfield or Jimi Hendrix fill. Great for a minor chord. Um, what, what it is, I, I have that pointer finger flat. I'm going to do a quick hammer-on pull-off from 8 to 11. So that's... And then I'm going to roll that finger over to that 8 there and land on that 10. And then I may do some kind of... or a... can be any number of those things. I think the thing I would like to get across is to not try and slavishly imitate what I have done or what anybody has done, but to see the possibility of all these double stops uh, uh, um, that are in front of you. Also, diagonals. And sit, I mean, sit around with that. My band mates, bandmates might get bored of me, though. Okay, so on the C minor. Anything of that ilk. I, I definitely recommend that Curtis Mayfield fill, though. Chord drops to G minor, so I'm still thinking the same thing. And I kind of, I know the vocal melody, he kind of is near this, this, uh, this C natural there, so that's why I aim for it. That is, you got to just be very clear about how you, you can delicately get that ring finger to come forward, but still hear that B string, that D that I have behind it. And that's, yeah, that's the, that's the real craft of these, these type of fills getting that to go flat. And then, yeah, so I do. I may sometimes do even do a, a very quick, a little, little grace note slide action. Very cool. So I'm still thinking that, that if it's a major chord, it's major pentatonic. The minor ones, I'm using my minor pentatonic. And I think you know, when I come back, you know, I may do a... Same thing, investigate those, those possibilities. just so much in there and then it goes back up to C minor and this is kind of neat I don't ever hit the root position of E flat this is something that Hendrix does in bold is love so you get a little lost you're like what how is he over here when the chord is back here that's my E flat you can do a major pentatonic scale in front of it D. So that's why on the C minor. What am I doing? I'm very proud of that. I like that fill. So I do the Curtis Mayfield on the C minor. 
I do the inversion fill on this E flat. I'm actually looking back here, but I'm up here. That's the inversion fill for this D back here. And then I know it's actually a D7, so I'm, I'm like, where is a C? There's a C. C is the 10th fret of the D string. And that gives you a really cool. And then down to a G minor. That's kind of the same fill from before. And then back to B flat. And then this is straight out of Red House. That's a giant major pentatonic run. So that is six, uh, eight slides to ten. The hammer on, eight, nine, ten. Uh, another slide, ten to twelve. Landing on that ten, and then a little, and so there's actually a B flat chord up here that looks like a C. And then I go back around. Uh, and there you have it. Um, so. In conclusion, this one I don't use any root 5. Well, yes, I do use root 5 fills too. Okay, well, uh, I guess in conclusion, let me sum up. Let me explain. I can't. Um, look at your pentatonic scales. Investigate every possible hammer-on you can find. With the same with the minors. There's so much stuff to discover. You don't have to play anybody else's song. You can play your own song. Oh my god, I'm really annoying today. Well, I'll stop before I really run off the rails. I hope that is interesting and helpful for you. Thanks so much for watching. <laughs>